Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we have yet another podcast with yours truly, Brian Ho, and Logan, who is actually shopping right now and uh, with his family, but he's taking a time out to talk to us. Hey, Logan. That's how that's uh, Logan here. That's how dedicated I am. I got I to gotta go on in the grocery store. Yep. And, uh, of course... Of course, then CeeLo as well. Hi. We actually had just had a very big game convention. and you, Normally, it's not that big on previous years, but this year it was pretty, pretty good. Um, we're talking about the TGS in Japan. And um, everybody was there. Well, not everyone was there. Sony wasn't there. They did a press conference with their Sony, um, uh, Sony, what was it called? The Sony Play of the Week or whatever, Showplace. And, yeah, State of Play. Yeah, and actually it was a pretty good one. We also had stuff from Microsoft. We had Elephant for Xbox, and we had uh, Capcom there. We had uh, Koei there. We had a lot of good, actually, show today. So, uh, over there, at least. And let's find out. What did we like the best here? And um, what did pop out to you guys? For me, I'll start it off with um, the one game I really liked. And I'm sad to say that with all these exclusive wars going on, especially with Call of Duty... It's funny to see that this one game is also exclusive to only PlayStation, but it's by Team Ninja, and it's Rise of the Ronin. I don't know if you guys saw that one, but that one looked really good. Of course, the God of War Ragnarok trailer, uh, it's more of a story uh, trailer, but that looked awesome. I, I gotta say that after watching that trailer, I said, Elden Ring who? And I'm thinking that that's gonna be game of the year. And I already pre-ordered that game, that's my first game I ever pre-ordered for $70, and I'm not happy about that. <laughs> but still, that game looks really, really good. Other games that I thought were really cool was this, uh, actually a co-op co play game where um, you fight ghosts, which is the Ghostbusters. I don't know if you guys saw that one, but the Ghostbuster ones looks really, really fun where you guys play as a team, right? And you, <laughs> you basically hunt ghosts. And I think that's a great idea. I mean, you have all these other games where you just hunt something. Um, and this is just a, the perfect idea where you, you band together and get ghosts. Um, there was one other game I saw. With, like, I, I forgot was, what it was called. It's going to come back to me. But I think it was Stellar Blade. That's right. Stellar Blade. That's the one game that I felt that kind of looked next gen. Because right now we're in a world where um, we're on a crossroads where PS4, you know, Xbox One, they're all like kind of like uh, having games on their next gen systems and they don't look so great yet you know but stellar blade actually look like a high fidelity visual game not sure how it's gonna play and how it's gonna turn out but it does look damn pretty so what do you guys think we'll start with um logan since you're at the store so what do you think what did you what surprised you well, I just looked at the the new games that you know we really didn't have before. Like, I mean, uh, Capcom has that online game. Did you see that? Did you see that game where everybody has like their own suits? Uh, forgot what it was called. I think it was like a, a, the Exo Primal or something. Oh, Exo Primal. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like that one too. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm just saying it's an online game, and uh, you know, how often does Capcom do online only games, right? Yeah, I think the last one was what that um, monster game, right? That I think we played that on uh, 360, right? What was it called? I think we've only played it for a oh, second. Oh, I know, you, I, I know what board. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that, and then the the one on the uh, in the snow. What what game was that? Uh, yeah, that's it was the one an online I was game. About. I can't remember it right now offhand. I'll, I'll come up with it, but it was like a Xbox 360 exclusive kind of, but um. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the only game that I I guess caught. That's the only game that like caught interest as far as like anything like new, new. But you know, I mean, Sonic Frontiers. That's kind of new, like open world. Hey, did you notice that you in could, Sonic uh, Frontiers? Um, they showed uh, you like a demo of it right before a teaser trailer, like really early, like probably couple months ago and then now this trailer in the TGS looks way better like it looks like two different games 
I don't know. Oh yeah, and there's more stuff. There's more stuff going around in the open world, right? Yeah. Like before, it looked like dead, right? Like <laughs> yeah, it, wasn't it looked like black. it actually looks like a game you want to play now. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is actually something I might actually pick up. Um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be delayed or not. I mean, everything looks like it's being delayed, but I hope that game actually comes out yeah. soon because that looks pretty good. Anything else you see? Yeah, that was a that was a new game for me. I mean, a, a change for me as far as like you know, Sonic games. Uh, I mean, uh, other than that, all the games I'm looking forward to are like all the fighting games. I saw the Tekken 8 teaser. I saw the Street Fighter 6 gameplay. You, you saw, you guys saw it. You guys saw Ken, and you guys saw all the other. They introduced the uh, more characters, right? Yeah. They they the also introduced freedom, the uh, Freedom Fighter story. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, what else stood out to me? I mean, there's remakes, right? Remakes are remakes. They don't really interest me, but uh, what else did I see? I remember the game now. It's called Lost Planet. The last Capcom kind of online Oh, there you go. Lost Planet. Game. Yeah. Remember we played that on the 360 on Lost Planet 2? And we just yeah. really didn't get anywhere, so we gave up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you you know one game I'm looking forward to is that uh, it's a remake. It's the uh, remember that Samurai uh, Yakuza game? They, they, oh, but like they call a, it like yeah. yeah, Ishin, like a dragon Ishin, I think that's what it's called. It's uh, like they in, changed. Uh, they, they don't. They don't. They're Ishin not calling remake, it Yakuza right? anymore. They're calling it like yeah. It's a remake, I think, because we never got the game in America. Uh, it's only yeah. Been, uh, it was uh, it was yeah. it was released only on PS4, I think. Yeah, yeah Japan, PS4. Right? Yeah, yeah. It looks interesting. I saw that. Um, he has he does have guns. <laughs> I saw that a little bit. Oh, there was, that, uh, there was that. There was that. There was that Team Ninja game. That uh, Wo Wo Long. Do, do, yeah. do you remember seeing that? It's 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 a. It looks like a hack and slash RPG type game. Yeah, it's really funny. I saw it's, it's made by the same company as Team yeah. Ninja. Wo Long looks really good to me. I definitely when I first saw it, I definitely wanted to play it right away. I'm a Team Ninja fan. But unfortunately, it's kind of like a Souls game too. That's what well, almost every game seems like a Souls game now. But um, yeah, I heard they're gonna make it hard and difficult. Too. I know that's my. Just... I mean, being at my age, I don't have time to deal with difficulty. <laughs> I just want to run through it and enjoy my time. But hopefully, um, Rise of the Ronin because they're doing that as well. It looks like another Souls game type game, except just different style. Yeah. You know. But yeah, good picks. Good picks. Uh, what about you, CeeLo? Let's see here. Uh, Exo Primal. Yeah, I like that game a lot. It looked like it was uh, reminding me of Warframe. I don't know. Have you guys played Warframe? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the free one, right? Play yeah. Online? yeah. 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 It reminded me a lot of that. It looks really good. Um, Forspoken. Dude, I didn't know anything about that game. You mentioned that before. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, Beho had mentioned that before. And um, that looked it's pretty good too. I actually pretty impressed with it. Um, let's see here. I thought Street Fighter Six looked pretty good. Uh, I'm not really good at that game, but I heard that they put in some kind of like uh, you know, uh, I don't know, like different controls to make it easier for people that are not really good at it, right? Um, so that that might make me buy it. I don't know. Um, that was good. What else? What else looked good? Um, yeah, the like a dragon. There's there was there's like like a dragon eight, and then there's the Ishin one, right? So those, how many yeah. new games are they coming out with? Well, Ishin is the most recent developed one. Everything else is gonna come out later on, like 2024. So oh really? Yeah. I thought, yeah. I thought like a dragon eight was 2023. No, it's uh, just all the remakes first, I think. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I think those were the ones that really kind of caught my eye. I'm trying to think if there was, um, I mean, yeah, Sonic Frontiers looks good too. I, I'm not really that big into like the Sonic, you know, 3D games, but it looked pretty nice. Um, what else? There was a remake for the, I don't know if you guys remember the Suikoden uh, RPGs from PlayStation. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, Konami's I thought they were gonna do a true remake. remake. I think it looks more like a remaster because it's the yeah. same graphics or similar graphics, just kind of pushed up to HD. 
a little bit redone. The pixel art is there. I thought they were going to re redo the whole thing. But yeah. um, it looks like it's just going to be a quick... To me, it looks like a cash cow. Quick one, just to see what people say about it. And maybe if it does well, they'll probably maybe make another Suicune in uh, game. You never know, right? It always does. Well, it always starts that way. I know. I, I've seen like, especially with Final Fantasy VII remake. Before that game came out for the uh, PS4, right? What happened was um, they were like just testing the market by putting out reboots of like you know or remakes of the old Final Fantasy series, and people were buying them. You know, they were going crazy even for Final Fantasy VII as old as it was. People were buying them like crazy, and look what happened. You know, we got a remake. So. So you never know. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's based on us, really, because um. But um, what else was actually announced at the TGS was really funny to me, because I thought Square Enix, you know, the one of the um, companies that I've grown up with, they announced that it's really hard for them to make AAA games anymore, you know, and make money off of it. That's what they're saying, like the how the you know competition is, how the systems are more powerful than ever, so they need more people and more more um you know whatever to make the game and i, I believe it because it's getting more crazy and crazier but now they're saying that you know they they're looking for partnerships you know looking for partnerships outside to try to help them you know still stay afloat and make games and i don't know what you guys think about that i mean is that do you think the trend is going towards where you see all these acquisitions of all these companies right maybe it is too hard to make games nowadays because it's so you know, we, we expect so much now with the graphi graphical capabilities and um, it just takes too much people to make a game. Too many people. And it costs, the costs are so high. Do you think that that's just the way it's going to be now where we don't see that many independent companies anymore? Um, I, I mean, it never caught my attention until you just mentioned it right now. Uh, this, uh... <laughs> well, no, this is kind of news where... It did, it did surprise a lot of people because no one ever thought Square Enix would yeah. ever say that. You know, they're always in it. You know, they're usually on their own. They're usually financially fine. You never think about it, but now they're saying that it's costing a little bit too much. Because well, if you look at their year, they're not having a great year, even though they're still releasing good games. Like Babylon's Fall, they lost a lot of money on that. Because um, I mean, it's not even a year yet, and they're going to cancel the game because it's a live service. Even um, you pay it paid, you pay for the game, and then it's also a live service. But no one's even playing it. And then you got like Avengers from last year. I mean, I think that's a good game campaign wise, but it didn't do well overall. And also Guardians of the Galaxy, an unsung hero, where that game is really, really good. I don't know if you guys played it, but that game is excellent. And and because they didn't market it, they thought it was gonna be crap like uh, Avengers, so it just died. It didn't do anything. So they lost a lot of money. Well, maybe that's what maybe that's the that's the reason is. They kind of went away from their old formula, you know, RPGs, their classic franchises, and then they're starting to do a bunch of online stuff and yep. and license Marvel yep. stuff, right? Maybe they maybe they should just rely on their Final Fantasy franchise, uh, you know, original games, of course, like uh, Forspoken, right? Yeah, Forspoken does look good. Uh, it's also made by another uh, company. I mean, they. I mean, they are making a, a a Crisis Core game, right? I saw that. Uh, I mean, it's gonna come out on. Uh, uh, I think it's a. I think it's a remake. PSP version, yeah. But what what are you asking? Are you asking whether the big companies are gonna stop making new games, or whether that's gonna hurt indie companies and they're gonna stop making games? Because you asked both. Well, of those what I'm things. thinking is, my real question. Yeah, you're right. Uh, my question would be more like, do you feel like the industry as a whole, the gaming industry, you have these big companies now, they might be you know, with all the acquisitions going around, they might need help. So it looks like maybe Sony might become um, a good partner for uh, Square or even Microsoft or whoever can pony up the money to support them, right? And when you see all these exclusives, right, all these deals that Sony's making, like paying off companies so that they're exclusive to their system, right? I mean, it makes sense. If you're um, a developer and you have this company come up to you, say, hey, I know you're having troubles making this game. We'll pay for this money, but just make it on our system, you know? And um, it's it feels like, especially Japan, I mean, none of them are really on Xbox, right? But, of course, Xbox is just gobbling people up, all these companies. It just looks like people can't afford to make games anymore, or the only way they can is by, you know, um, pretty much...
joining the big boys or joining Microsoft or joining Sony. Do you think that's just going to be the wave of the future where just big companies, we're just going to have one or two in the future that just make games? Yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, so Sony and Microsoft aren't the only two big companies. There's EA, no, right. right? EA. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Tencent, though. Tencent has like their um, film yeah, in, in every company. <laughs> Yeah, ten cents a big one. Uh, what I'm saying is, they could buy out Squaresoft. They could buy out uh, like whomever, right? They'll still make uh, multi-platform games. Yeah, I don't think that it's gonna be like there's gonna be a giant, you know, monopoly, or there's only gonna be like two companies that control all the other, you know, smaller companies. I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, I. I kind of don't believe these companies that say, oh, we're losing all this money because I think what it is is they're not making whatever they were hoping to make. And then they claim that they lost money because like there's still they still have a lot of money that they're playing with. I, I kind of find it hard to believe that they're acting like, you know, this is a big risk to make new games because like now all of these remasters are coming out. Right. We talked about that. Was it a week ago, two weeks ago? It just seems like a cheap way to make more money without you know, investing in, I guess, the infrastructure or whatever they need to make the new games. Oh, that, that's the answer then. Just basically lower the budget and make make lower budget games to make yeah, profit, and, right? Right, yeah. yeah, and sell them for like 70 bucks. What, like, why, why do they cost that much if they're just, you know, basically like slightly improved versions of the game? Yeah, I think it's just because of the market, you know, how... Uh, Switch games for 70, uh, you know, plus inflation, right? It's always going to be like that. Yeah, I guess. I actually see uh, your way, uh, CeeLo, definitely. Um, that it does look that way, honestly, but um, it's a hope that maybe we don't go towards that direction. I mean, I would like to see indie developers again, of course. But you're right, especially with um, the company saying that, oh, we made this much money. Or no, that's your projection, right? They're projecting that they're going to make this much money. They still make money. They just don't hit that projection, which means that they think it's a loss. It's only a loss to the investors, right? But they still make money. I remember I was working for a company. Um, I remember we projected that we we're going to make $400 million that year, right? In the end, um, the company still made money, but they only made $350 million, right, profit-wise. Still a lot of money, but they were upset about that. That uh, that fifty million dollars. Like, well, you projected four hundred, so now we had to cut hours. We had to cut all our people and crew just to come up with the other fifty million. You know, override, and that was just like something that I never liked. But you know, I understood because it's a business and you're trying to make shareholders happy. But um, yeah, I see that point as well, where kind of like the consumers are the ones who get hurt. It's the companies who like look bad, but they're not really losing money. It's just the consumers who are going to take that brunt of it. It's just like Sony, right? Sony probably projected a lot of money for their PS5s. They're like, well, we're not making as much now, so we're going to add on 50 bucks around the world, <laughs> you know? And uh, we're trying to, like, give it to the consumers. Yeah, but the only way that they're not going to be able to continue that trend is if we don't buy those games, man. Like, if why are we, like, for the, you know, like these yearly rollouts of the sports games, why why do people buy them every year at the full price and then pay all the other, you know, microtransactions? Like, you're just helping them continue their lazy, you know, business model of just cranking out games that make really small changes each year, right? You're absolutely correct well, about that one. I've always been wondering that's why. You, that's how you make money, right? You roll out yeah, the I same mean, game and make people pay. Make people pay uh, even more, or make people pay again, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I see it where people are catching on a little bit, especially with like the FIFA games and Madden games. That's why they're going for a subscription model now. You know. Yeah. So that. Oh, but you, you FIFA just have has, an update, right? Has you're now. getting the money every month now. Just to play their game. It's kind of like what Adobe did with uh, Photoshop, you know? Yeah. I remember that when they went um, the, when they went subscription-based instead of buying the program. Right. I was mad because, you know, I used to, like, just get it from my friend and then burn it. But then uh, now you have subscription-based. So all your updates are just from them. And you can't really, like, you know, steal that. I right, don't, right. Well, you probably can, but I don't know how. <laughs> so so no, that's interesting true. how yeah. the yeah. gaming industry is going. Yeah, that's a good comparison. You're right. I do feel that Game Pass, like I love Game Pass, but I do fear it as well. Where 
one day we're just going to have, like, a TV, right? And, like, those Samsung TVs. You just go online and play, right? You don't even have to worry about the console anymore. I mean, it does sound cheaper, but in the long run, when you think about it, if they take, like, 30 bucks from you a month, right? I mean, times 12, that's a lot of money per year. Per yeah. person, per everything. Right. And that's like, wow. And the, and so. you don't even own the game at the end of the day. Like, you have you don't have any <laughs> ownership, up. like, claims of ownership over the games. So you're just yeah. basically giving them money to rent games. Yeah, yeah my biggest fear because, is when uh, Steam goes music. down. I, that's, that's what I do with music. I, uh, I pay yeah. monthly for stream music, and I don't own any of it, but... I mean, you always have the option to to own it, right? Right, but it's still digital, right? If you lose it, that's it. I mean, it's funny because even in the theaters, right? Um, like, you think you can play your own content. Like, when we ever we rent out a theater, right, for, like, a birthday or something, and you just want to play a DVD or something, right? If it's a, if it's a movie, like, that's owned, like, let's say a Hollywood film, like Top Gun, right? Like, the original Top Gun. They want to play the original Top Gun in our theater, right? After uh, so many people, they have a, a number of people that they could say that the company, the uh, um, the companies don't care, the distributors, right? But once they, it gets past a certain number, they ask for a tax, they ask for a fee, so that you you can li- they will license the um, film to you to play, even though you're playing from your own Blu-ray disc. You know what I mean? That's like crazy. Yeah, but that's how it works. I mean, that's the way with the future. But you know, <laughs> I don't want to get too off track here, like we just did. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Good stuff. I mean, this is like real life that could really affect um, gaming, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a rip off. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. In other news, right. Um, you know, with all these remakes, you know, that, um, are coming all over the place. Everyone's making a remake. Do you want to see if it's worth it to make a new game? Maybe who knows? Or they're just like trying to bring back old, like old titles that people forgot about and just making them new, like GoldenEye. I mean, did you guys see that one? GoldenEye's coming out on the Nintendo Switch and for the Xbox, right? But two different styles. My question to you is, did you guys ever play GoldenEye N64? I mean, I did. Uh, Logan, did you? And I, I'll, I'll generally say I had fun. I remember playing the four-player split screen. I remember one of my friends was playing as Odd Job. He was so short, and we had friendly fire on that, um, you know, he was in front of me. You know, because he's so short, they couldn't shoot him. But I was behind him trying to shoot the other guy. But in the end, I just shot him in the head. (laughs) So, I remember that. It's just funny because, you know, odd job was so hard to hit. But for me, it was very easy. But um, in general, do you think you guys are going to come back to that game? To actually check it out again? Because I think it's one of the games. It's notorious as one of the best games of all time for first-person shooters. Especially for the N64. And for the history of it all. But, you know, it's one of those games that just looks horrible right now. <laughs> it's just, it, it, it's sluggish. It doesn't, it did not age well. Do you think this game will, I mean, people will pick it up, but do you think they're going to make fun of us for loving this game so much? Unless they, unless they fix it up, like how would they do with the, you know, Turtles, Calabonga, Calabonga Selection, the, uh, you know, the takeaway. You have the option for no slowdown. You have the option for no flicker. They have online play, right? So that that attracts people or anyway, that attracted me to playing Turtles uh, arcades online with everyone, right? Uh, That's true. So you know, people will want to play uh, GoldenEye online. But I mean, those games are. I mean, even when you talk about retro games, right? Like even on Genesis and stuff, they all had a certain gameplay to it that made it awesome, right? So you, sometimes you can get away with it, just like you know, you can play like the old original Super Mario Brothers. Where, I mean, it's the gameplay, right? The, I mean, it's, it's not about the graphics anymore. It's just how you play the game. And that's how I see some of the retro games. But when you look at GoldenEye, I mean, the mechanics are all bad. The, the gameplay is, I mean, unless they fix it. I mean, back then, it's all we had, right? So we had to make do. But now, when you think about it, it's just hard, especially with the standards that we have today. I have a feeling that, like, say, we boot it up, we play it for, like, two minutes, we go, oh, this is horrible, and then we just turn it off. But how do you know it's, it's not, it's not going to run smoother? You know, the emulating well, even probably, if it looks like, smoother, uh, you know... I, uh, I mean, the Nintendo, six, uh, Nintendo Switch one, I think it's going to be the original game, just with online play. Okay. It'll run that's, smoother, that's yes. That's what you're talking about. I mean, we actually, yeah. you know, I shouldn't say too much, but I don't. I, no one has seen footage, it's just been teased. But supposedly the Xbox version is supposed to be way better, you know, 4K everything. 
But the only problem is it has no yeah. online play, so I won't be able to take you guys out, you know? Oh. Yeah. You mean not, not take us out, but us take you yeah. out, right? Either or, right? We're probably going to play for like five minutes and give up. I don't think this is going to be the next Halo, you know? <laughs> but you're, you're right. There's a lot of games that uh, I've, I've gone back to retro-wise that have an age well. Yeah. But, but I mean, 16-bit, it, it aged pretty well. Yeah. Like, I, I could say the 16-bit era is probably the, the best era at all. The 32-bit is probably the worst, right? Yeah, because they were, they were advancing the into polygons, 3D. And some games just don't look good. Yeah. I mean, all the 2D stuff still, like, holds strong sometimes. But, yeah. Okay, guys, it's time for another game here. Uh, a little bit different this time around. I'm going to give you a multiple-choice questions. Um, well, multiple choice answers and one question and you guys have to figure out which one is right now Of course you will get points for this and this is what you think is correct So it's not like you're teaming up like 20 questions. All right So this game I'm talking about right now is one of the old game. It's a retro game It's a musical cyberpunk version of Star Fox is what people used to call it. It's called Rez R-E-Z and it's a beautiful um, game where um it's like really futuristic a little bit before really ahead of its time actually for music and shooters together. But so, the graphics look like Tempest 2000, remember? A little bit, yeah, with some person in the middle of it and shooting stuff. Connect. But yeah, they kind of took that idea. You're right. Now the question is this, okay? What platform of video game consoles did this game not play on? Okay, not oh. play on. Okay, is it A the Sega Dreamcast? B, the PlayStation 2, C, the Xbox 360, or D, the Nintendo Wii. Ding, 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 ding. Wait, are we buzzing in? Wait, no, 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 no. Just take your time. A, B, C, or D. Which one do you think that this game did not come on? Yeah, but so, who are you asking? Dreamcast. Wait, wait, I'm just repeating it. A, Dreamcast. B, uh, PlayStation 2, C, Xbox 360, or the Nintendo Wii. Which one did the game not come on? Like, so it was released on a lot of systems, for sure. It's one of those good games. It might even come out on uh, PlayStation VR. That's what they were talking about, maybe in the future. But I already it would know be a great game for PlayStation VR. Uh, yeah. But what, what console do you guys think? Uh, wait, what were the options? No, okay. It's the Nintendo Wii. The Dream, Dream, Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, uh, 360, yeah. or Nintendo Wii. Yeah, the Nintendo Wii. Yeah, I I agree. It is the Nintendo Wii. It's the Nintendo Wii. Okay. You guys are correct. Yes, it was never on Nintendo Wii, even though this game would have been perfect for the Wii because of the motion controls. But... Absolutely correct. Dreamcast. It was on the Dreamcast, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, and what other system? Do you know the other system that it was on? Uh, the Sega Saturn? No, I don't know. No. <laughs> the, Too advanced for that system. Neo Geo. Uh, no. Okay, you're just going backwards now. <laughs> PSP? It's going to be the PlayStation the PS 4. PSP. All PS4. No, it wasn't on the PSP. It was on a PlayStation. But it would be great actually on a PSP because it's short spurts, yeah. uh, fat fun game. Real, yeah, it actually would have been a perfect game, but it's yeah. on the PS4. But actually, it oh. probably is on the Xbox One and Series X, maybe to be a backwards compatibility. So you never know. I should check that out actually. But um, but yeah, that's the question. You guys both get a point, so that's good. Um, we'll probably come up with another history question next week since twenty questions just takes you guys too damn long. And that was an awesome game there. Thanks for remembering. Um, so next week, we're probably going to talk about some other news, hopefully in the industry that comes up. And we'll see what's going on. Maybe by then, Microsoft actually owns Call of Duty by then. Who knows? But until then, that's it for us here on this podcast. And thank you, Logan. Ciao. And thank you, CeeLo. Peace. And we will see you guys next time. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.